as a speaking turn. Um, are there any further questions or can we move to the substantive motion? Question from Member Hale and then question from Member O'Connor. I don't like rhetorical questions because there's no answers to Putting, them. Looking at, these two, looking at these bits of land, if, if they were offered to us, would we buy them? Would we buy them? No, so we brought them for roading purposes, and I, I know I was on council when both of them were brought. They were brought for roading purposes, and that was the prime objective to have them for roading. Um, so now, so we would not have brought them. Um, I'm all for purchasing land, but I want to see if we purchase land, I want to see land that actually children can actually use and play on. And I have never seen anyone, and I go past the part on Lake Road. Well, probably once in a blue moon do you ever see anybody using that area. It's, it's cold, it's dominated by car fumes, and it's, it's quite a substantial amount of area. I'm, I'm more for, all for happy to keep all the balance of it, that's fine, but I think that little piece is not necessary. The, the, um, the piece on the corner of Wairau, that once again, it's, a, it's hugely trafficked, I can't see anyone taking their children there to have a picnic. I'm darn sure I wouldn't. I don't think anyone would even go there and walk their dogs. It's got fu it's, it's dominated by fumes. To put our energy into getting somewhere something that children can actually use. Lake Town Green is a good example. That is a great park. But these ones are not, they're not areas where people want to go and sit, relax, eat their lunch, take their children, take their dogs, whatever, because they're just not welcoming areas. Yes, they soften the area, and I think the, the one on Lake Road has got, still got enough land to soften the area. It's got the, um, the, the seagull in it. Unfortunately, it's got a bus stop in front of it. The sculpture. But, um, the sculpture. But, you know, they're, they're not areas that are actually hugely welcome. If we want to put our energy into getting land, put it where people will use it. And, and I think that's where we want to invest our energy. And I think that if we start arguing for these bits of land, it makes it much harder for the board to argue for bits of land that are of value to families, like the Lake Town Green, which I think is great, hugely used, where people want to go. It's not dominated by cars, it's much safer. These places are not places people want to go and sit, re recreate, eat their lunches, look at the view, smell the fumes. No. Okay. okay, so this is part of the reason why I don't like rhetorical questions. They very quickly become Sorry. speaking turns. But I'm going to write that off as your speaking turn, yeah. Member Hale, uh, and then I will move back to Member O'Connor. Yeah, well, Mr Chair, I'd like the Forest Hill Road one referred to the local ratepayers group, the Milford ratepayers group, um, because I don't know of any um, Facebook pages that link in that area. I've put it on two different Facebook pages down our area. Overwhelming response is... Leave it alone. We need the green for the future. It's interesting that um, Member Hale has looked at it as she's sitting at the lights. This is what it's about, looking at the green. Why would you no. want to put... Uh, why would anyone... This is my speaking term. I know. I was why would anyone want to put a house on a corner, just around the corner in... I must send you on the photographs taken... Um, around the corner from the Esmond Road pocket park that everybody loves and looks at. 29,000 drivers a day look at it when they're sitting at the lights and when they're in road rage. Um, just around that next bend, there's cars keep whipping around and went through a fence last night where they're doing a building. I've got all the photographs. These are very dangerous places to put a family, a house, an apartment. And the one in the, in the Forest Hill Road, as night follows day, Auckland Transport will need that for road widening. It is getting busier down there. Um, they say no. Of course they don't want it now. They will in the future. Um, it's a very busy area. And there is not a speck of grass left on Westlake Girls. And this is opposite Westlake Girls. And I tried for 20 years to get this council to buy a piece of land in Hauraki. When I moved to Hauraki, I couldn't believe it was bereft of open space. It took 20 years. And here we've got a lovely Lake Town Green. And now we've got this tiny bit of park, part of which 300 square metres or 325 square metres, we think we should sell for a house. Now, we don't want it. Nobody uses it, but their eyes use it. 
environmentally, we all look at these pocket parks. There's one over in the court, uh, on Dominion Road and Landscape Road. They've been there for years. I look at them when I sit there. I think they're, they are not. People say, oh, no, we don't use them. Get rid of them. The, the one in the corner of in Esmond Road and Lake Road's beautiful. The one down the next corner, Eben Street, is the same thing, taking the front unit. And all it needs is a lawnmower. <laughs> The cost of mowing the lawns, no big deal. Probably costs twenty-five dollars, but being council, it's probably forty-five dollars to keep these lawns mown. And in the meantime, people like George, when he's racing into town, can just look at a piece of green rather than having a family in apartments on a very dangerous corner. So I think we should refer this to the Milford ratepayers. We're very, very happy to help to be using the ratepayers when we want to, but their area actually comes right down here, so I'd like to refer it to them um, because there's no other social media thing. But definitely the Howraki and the Devonport people do not want the How this, this particular place sold. OK, once, once again, I'm going to write that off as a speaking turn and just looking at my list of speaking turn versus questions, you've already had yours, Deputy Chair, so unless there's a very minor additional point you can make, I'll, I'll perhaps allow it, but otherwise you've already spoken. Well, it is an additional point. It's, it's very a, minor? It's an amendment by addition. Um, but you can't because, move that after you've spoken. Well, I, I haven't spoken. I comment, you have. I, you I, you, I you provided a comment. I commented on addition of a portfolio discussion on a comment that Mr Perry and yes, uh, Mike Yes, but you didn't phrase made, it. wasn't a question. But I hadn't, so it was I hadn't a, spoken to this item. Well, I, I recorded that as your speaking term because it was a comment that did not require a question, an answer to a question. So I, am, I recorded that as your speaking term. Well, I object to that. Because... Well, I, I, I appreciate that you object to it, but that is what happened. But what is, what is the amendment that okay. you want to put forward? You're going to need someone else to move it. I'll let sure. you put it up there, but you're going to need someone else who hasn't spoken to move it. That on both B and C, that we request the governing body to not make a decision on this until it's been... Ref the board's had a chance to consult local ratepayer and community groups. Right, so someone who hasn't oh, spoken I'll who might move that? Move. Moved by Member Cohen. Do I have a seconder? Uh, no, you have already spoken, Member O'Connor. Just to clarify, my A is actually a separate motion altogether, taking out the response to the period. So it's got nothing to do with this, but it's just dropped out at this stage, so it's foreshadowing. Right, so you're attempting to move an amendment by addition. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the member oh, I had had a I, well, maybe I was being a little bit relaxed. I had those mostly as questions. There was a question back from Mr Perry, which then he provided a response to, but I still counted that as questions. So, uh, well, let's just be clear. It's just the way that these meetings are supposed to go. So I'm not going to have speaking turns and questions turned into what they often become, which is an opportunity to come back and have another bite of the cherry. So... Going back to the point, you've got your um, amendment by addition, which has been moved by Member Cohen, but it hasn't been seconded. So it laps for, lacks, for lack of a seconder. What's the point of order? Well, Mr Chair, when you say I spoke before, I hadn't actually spoken. I was commenting on a question that Mike Cohen had put to Mr Perry. And if you recall, and, and you will because you comment on it yourself, it was during question time. It was not during debating time. And so, therefore, I did not have a speaking turn, and I reserve the right to exercise my speaking turn. OK. What I'm going to do is acknowledge that, and this, I'm going, obviously going to have to be tighter on this, members, because the motion had been moved and seconded. I had specifically thrown thing, uh, it open for questions to the officers. This attitude of, asking, of making comments that purport to be questions is not appropriate, and so we've got to restrict that in some way. So I appreciate that the confusion, and in the case of this instance, maybe it was a confusion because it was in, the, in between the exchange with um, questions. So I will allow you to move it, uh, Member, Cohen, uh, Member Gillen, in which case Member Cohen can second it. But obviously I'm now going to have to very, have a very clear point at which I say, question time is over, we are now into the debate, and when I do that, any attempt to, to make a comment by saying, wouldn't you agree, and then proceeding to speak for five minutes is not going to be appropriate. So members are on notice for that reason. So it's moved by Member Gillen, seconded by Member Cohen.
request that the governing body not make a decision on the potential disposal of two um, Hillcrest Road, sorry, uh, Forest Hill Road and uh, Forest Hill and one bar three to eight Lake Road, Hauraki, until the local board has the opportunity to seek the views of the local community. We'll just take out the second local. Yeah. Well, the first local. Yeah. So it's moved, Member Gillen, seconded, Member Cohen. Any comments? Yes. And I can speak to the substantive motion. Yes. Right. Um, in regards. Just, just to be clear, because you can doesn't mean you need to, but just, <laughs> just so we're clear on what you can do. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for the guidance on that matter. Um, yes, it. it I, I am concerned because I, I feel the current system is, is seriously flawed in regards to parks, because I'm not quite sure how they're even coming up with their conclusions. And I'm particularly aggrieved, um, probably on the Lake Road one, I didn't realise that we actually owned that land. And if you remember rightly under the previous term, um, we had various uh, delegations of young people who wanted to have a very small skateboard park there. And when council did the exercises on it, they couldn't quite fit it in. Now that wasn't on the basis of using that extra bit of land, because I wasn't even aware of it. Um, and so therefore we could, because it, quite frankly, the, um, the park uh, um, member how it is correct, is, is highly underutilised. Um, in fact, I'm even having trouble seeing the statue as I um, drive by. And it would be a fantastic um, spot for um, youth, because it's not ideal for children with, um, young, uh, with parents with young children, because we've done the superb um, Lake, uh, Lake Town Green, which um, a member um, O'Connor is familiar with. Um, it would be an ideal place for older youth to be able to utilise that spot, given the amount of traffic and everything around there. And so I don't think, now that I'm aware that this um, extra land is actually available, that we could actually have another go at finding a use for that particular reserve um, as um, a very small skateboard park, because there is no others nearby. The next closest one is down in Nathuringa. And it'll be an ideal one, and it'd be really great if I can actually drive past there and see it full of, of kids actually doing something, rather than, than it's empty at the moment. Right. Um, well, technically, you would have been moving this amendment through your speaking turn, Member Gillen, so I don't think that then gives you a second opportunity to speak to it. Fine then. Because you, because you called. Uh, okay. Mr. Very, Cohen. very briefly, please. So very, very quickly. I think what concerns me about this whole process is that the community looks at these green spaces and actually thinks that they are parks for the community. And I think we've been a bit remiss too because most of us, I, I certainly thought that was part of the park and it was, and it was ours, and, it, and didn't know that someone else had designs on it to sell it and put it into the railway set over town, and. It's, it's a, we in North Shore City Days did a um, big analysis of road reserves and pocket parks and other things that weren't gazetted to actually be reserves but had actually been accepted by the community as being parks. And the reason for that is that the solicitors at the time had advised the council that it was, it was too expensive to go through each one and gazette them as reserves, so they should, be, they should be bundled up. But in effect, the work was never done. So we're left with a lot of these pockets around our, our board area, in fact, the old North Shore City area, that weren't gazetted as reserves, and now council's taken the opportunity to flip them off for some ready cash. And certainly in this case, I read that half the money goes back to NZTA anyway if we sell it. So it's not going to add to council's coffers um, very much at all. With regards to the location of these, we don't have the ability to buy parks. You know, even if we wanted to, we don't have the ability to buy it, and we don't have the ability to we don't have the ability to sell it. It's actually dubious as to whether we've got the ability to not sell. And that's not an, a, a, there's nothing in the Act that says we can't not sell something. So I, I think there's a grey area there. But 
Even if we decided that there was a piece of land that we wanted to purchase at a park, as a park, somewhere else in Forest Hill would be really pushing it uphill to try and get the money out of council under these times to buy it. So what we've got might not be the best, but actually we've got it at the moment. So why get rid of it in the hope that in 10, 20, 30 years' time we might get something to two houses up the block? And as for the traffic and the location and that, sure. But, you know, we've got Victoria Park sitting on the biggest, one of the biggest intersections in Auckland. Every one of our major parks, whether it's Windsor Reserve and um, most of our parks, are on busy roads. And they're certainly on corners and intersections. That's what makes them so attractive. I mean, Kai Padaki's just poured money into Zion Hill on the, one of the biggest, noisiest, dirtiest, most polluted intersections in, um, in the Kaipataki area and, and seen it as an opportunity to develop as a park. So we shouldn't be put off by the fact that the number two Forest Hill Road is not landlocked um, somewhere else um, because that brings its own accessibility problems. So we, we need to overlook the issue as to whether there's there's traffic nearby or um, or it's it's in a busy area because actually most of our parks are and most of our successful ones are and if we look at Greville which we just poured millions of dollars into again it's on one of the busiest roads that um, that we have in our board area and so those arguments shouldn't be shouldn't be put up to this. I think that um, we should retain these, we should certainly let the community have its say, and I give notice now that if I'm re-elected, I want the board to revisit um, this, this, this decision if, Mr Chair, you get your way and recommend to council that it be sold, and if council don't sell it before the election, then um, I think we need to come back and revisit the decision so that no longer does this board area have to put up with its elected members selling off its parks? Okay, so... Um, just